Okay, we're going to be doing a beep from Hack the Box. I've went ahead and connected the VPN and launched the box. I've also ran the in-map scan. I actually ran it twice because it was taking so long. Uh, this is how I usually run an in-map scan, but it was going so slow. I went ahead and sped it up with a T4. I think in-map by default runs at a T3. Very rarely will I ever use a T5, only if I'm in a really impatient and I just want some ports to go look at because uh, T5 will actually miss some ports. So if you do run a T5, I always recommend going back and running a slower version. So we have a few ports here that we should go ahead and look at. Always port 80 right off the bat. And so I actually went ahead and already typed in the IP and it forwarded us to the port 443. So we're at HTTPS which is open right here. And so a couple of things that we should do is come here and one of the first things I always do is look at this. It's running with Elastics, so we're gonna Google that. But in the meantime, you should also go ahead and run a GoBuster, but GoBuster actually doesn't work on this box and neither does Derb and neither does Fuff. So you actually have to or a derb doesn't run. You have to run a derbuster. So we go ahead, launch derbuster. We can type in, we have our example right here. So we type in HTTP. So that way we have some kind of recon running in the background. Put in our IP address, port 80, and then we'll speed it up. We can come in here. We need a word list, and word lists are stored user, share all the way to the end, back one click, wordless, derbuster, and then we'll go medium, we don't want recursive, and we can start that. And while that is running, we can go ahead and Google Elastics. I went ahead and Googled the default credentials because this is something you should always try. I would say probably 20% of the time, and I actually tried a couple, when you actually come in here, um, I would say 20% of the time, default credentials are actually going to end up working. You're going to be able to log in with admin admin or uh, whatever the default credentials are that you find on Google. Um, even in job interview boxes or actual certification uh, situations, default credentials are probably going to work 20% of the time. So it's always worth trying. So in this case, default credentials do not work. So what we'll do is come back over here. Um, you can also run Searchploit or you can go and check out ExploitDB. In our case, we're gonna run Searchploit Elastics. And we can see cross-site scripting, not helpful, not helpful, not helpful. We're going to go ahead and check this one out. Uh, this one could be helpful, uh, could be helpful, and this one actually could be helpful as well. We're going to do this box two different ways. First, we're going to start right here with this one. There's a couple different ways uh, to copy an exploit to a current working directory. I'm not sure if I actually copied this already or not. I uh, have not. Um, and so one way is to go search exploit and then type in dash M. And since I have copied it in the past here, it popped up. So you can hit enter. And now if you run LS, there is the exploit right there. So we'll go ahead and read it to see what it says. And we have a local file inclusion and this is the location. So we can go ahead and copy this. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it uh, just through the browser. No point in running this and seeing what comes back. Uh, so we can just copy this. Come over here, paste it in, and run it, and you get this mumbo jumbo mess. We see the file is part of free PBX, but I like to view this a uh, little. A little prettier so if you go view page source sometimes this works with JavaScript files as well you can go view page source and it'll look a lot better so one of the things I see is free PBX and then you come down and keep reading we see possible user but then you come down here and it actually tells you um, you have a 
db username, another one, a password, another password, and another user, and it looks like more passwords. So this is a great place to go to go ahead and start looking at these. There's a couple different ways to run these. We're going to do this manually. And we're going to go ahead and try and SSH into the box using these usernames and passwords. So I'm actually going to shoot for the ones that I know will work because I think if I'm remembering right, this box will actually lock you out if you try too many false passwords. So I actually already ran this a little while ago when I was doing the box and uh, I hit this message and I wanted you guys to be able to see this. I had never seen this before. So when I ran this SSH, I kept on getting this error. And one of the things you need to get used to doing, and if you're a programmer, you already know this, you copy and you go to Google and you paste. And then you click and then you read to see why you're coming up with this error and what the problem is. Actually, um, didn't see my answer in that one, so I came down to the very next one. I keep going, I read, I was reading, and eventually I found a link. Let's see, I don't remember where I found the link, but I did find the link. And when I did find the link, it said to use this, because a newer version of SSH has come out and this box is running an old version in order to get it to work, you need to run this little flag here in order to get this to work. So if you go ahead and just SSH like you normally would, it is not going to work. So we're going to go ahead and paste this in. We're going to run it. And if this is your first time running SSH on any box, it's going to ask you, um, are you sure you want to continue? And you're, and you're going to type in yes. And then it asks for the password. And this is where our passwords over here come in handy. So it's this one. We'll go ahead and copy. We'll go ahead and paste and hit enter ID and we are root. And so that's one way to do this box. There is another way, and we'll go ahead and look at that now. We'll go ahead and exit. Um, we'll go back to our in-map scan. And this is actually an older exploit, but it does come up from now and again. Usually it only comes up in CTFs. Uh, I haven't seen it anywhere other than a CTF, so it's helpful to know, but it's uh, I haven't found it anywhere outside of a CTF. Let's see, where did our Durbuster go? So when you see the CGI bin, uh, this is something to always think, okay, I should look for this, is Shellshock. And so when we come in here, we can see we, we can try CG, this... Uh, Shellshock on port 80, which actually just forwards us to port 443. I've actually tried it on 443 and it doesn't work. And then we also have another web server right here on port 10,000. I have not hooked up a uh, burp to this box, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I'll cut the video and we'll come back and we'll go check out port 10,000. Okay, now that I have burp hooked up, we're back here. We're looking at this port 10,000. You can copy it and come up here and put in port 10,000. And I actually think that might have to be HTTP. I can't remember. Let's look and see what it was. Yep, HTTP. It says this web server is running in SSL mode, and it says try here instead, advance, continue, and we're brought to this page. Now, if you remember, we were we saw that the server is running the CGI. Where are you? It's running right here. It's running the CGI bin. So what we'll do is go ahead and turn intercept on. 
refresh this page, send it to repeater. And one of the things that I have done is rather than memorize what Shellshock looks like, I have actually saved it over in my notes. And we'll come over to, we can actually send that on its way, come over to repeater and we can copy this. We don't need that. And I'll paste in, this is the Shellshock code. It uh, just kind of makes the server freak out and then it runs what is put in after it. So my IP is 1415. And so I'll go ahead and set up a netcat listener and we'll go netcat dash LV NP 4444. And now it's listening. And when we send this, we should get a response over here and we do. So that's shell shock. That's a second way to go ahead and do this box. You will see this again in the future.